Good morning everyone and welcome to the west coast of South Africa, one of the most beautiful spring regions of the Cape Floristic region. So we're looking today at some really nice carnivorous plants, starting with this beautiful Drosera cystiflora hybrid. Before me is this amazing electric pink coloured cystiflora. You get slightly different colours from very bright pink, got some darker ones over here, growing in a very deep sand. So this is a hybrid between the red flower and the white flower Drosera cystiflora, giving us a lovely pink colour. Like the red sister flora, they're growing in this deep sandy soil. So if I dig a little bit up, it's very damp below the surface. It's very fine, kind of quartzy sand, beach sand, because this likely was underwater a long time ago. So you're ending up with these dense clumps of plants. They're just a hair over 20 centimeters tall, producing these beautiful pink flowers. It's still a bit early in the morning, so they're not fully open just yet. They're growing with all these Cape Stars, the Poridia, which here are quite a bright orange color. Some lacanalias that are finished and other plants. It's a lot of harvest to answer around. And this is simply an incredible hybrid. I've never seen anything like it before. So I think I'm going to go around and look for the parents. So here I find myself surrounded by more of these beautiful hybrids. But just an interesting thing about this area in the sea of Sister Flora that I'm sitting in. This was all once covered in invasive Port Jackson trees. It's an acacia from Australia that modifies the habitat pretty heavily and is incredibly hard to kill. So the landowner was telling me how this whole area around here was very deep in these trees. They dug them up, cut them up, cut them down, and burnt about 176 several meter high wood piles this poor Jackson tree and a few years later these sundews started showing up and they're slowly making their way around the property as it's opened up and the habitat is returning to its natural state. So it really shows how tolerant these plants are and able to re rapidly recolonize areas where they were once killed from. So I'm really really enjoying this because there were hundreds of them here and some of these plants are extremely tall because it's the sand is a little bit moister and typically I find the plants get a bit taller the wetter it gets. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy seeing us. I'll find some more plants and see you there. So here we have another one of the amazing Drosera forms that you get here on the west coast, the red flower Drosera cystiflora. This amazing bundle is simply one of the best I've ever seen. These bright scarlet red flowers, very fine little stigmas and styles inside there with bright yellow pollen. These are extremely tall, I'm going to guess up to or beyond 30 centimeters. There's quite a lot of them around here in varying degrees of openness because they respond very much to the sun. The brighter it is, the more open these flowers become. And we're surrounded with some of the pink ones as well behind us, the hybrids. So we've yet to find the other pair, the white flowered sister flora. But I'm sure it can't be far off. This is simply a magnificent, magnificent sight. Pretty much one of the best forms of drossery you can get. You can see the old flowers that have gone past here, one, two, three, and four. These giant ovaries, they make hundreds of seeds, these plants, to disperse rapidly and colonize new areas. So there you go. One of the greatest right there.
There you go. That's a clip. Before me, I have some amazing Drosera sister flora. This is a rare and incredibly beautiful yellow form. So it has these beautiful cupped yellow flowers, grows in these nice dense stands. You come in a little bit closer, you can see the petals don't spread outwards like a normal Drosera sister flora does, they just sit upright, making this lovely color. They're generally quite large, a few centimeters across, similar in size to other sister flora. They have this beautiful red tinge to the leaves, they're very delicate, and they get quite tall as well. I reckon these are about 20 centimeters, this whole bush. And interestingly, this form is incredibly self-sterile. It relies heavily on pollinators, and even then, it doesn't make much seed. It's part of the Rhinosterfelt biome, this vegetation around me. This here is wild rosemary, which is a common telltale plant of the Rhinosterfelt. And we're currently surrounded by lots of other bulbs and interesting things. It's very sandy soil. It's quite dry as well. Mix them up. It's moist under the surface, but very fine, borderline clay, actually, the sand. It's moist for the winter time and springtime and summer dries out completely and you won't find a single sundew here. Anyway, thanks for joining. See you at the next spot. It's in the next football wallet though. Traveled a little bit and now we find ourselves in even sandier positions near the town of Langemon, looking at a white flowered red leaf Drosera sister flora. So, if you get in a little bit here, you can see this is a really nice creamy white flowered form. The petals are still slightly cupped, maybe not fully open because it is still quite cool today, and you can see the buds, this nice kind of yellowish color to them. The plants themselves are green to red, the older leaves are reddish. This is very dry soil, I can barely even really get into it. So it's much drier than your typical Sunday habitats. It's a nice clump of them here, they're not very tall. It's a, about 16, 17 centimeters tall. It's a really sandy habitat. If you look at the habitat as a whole, it's quite dense in this rest here. It's thatching grass, rest in AC, characteristic part of the fables. This is more a Strandfelt type biome. So it's bigger shrubs further away. This is mildly disturbed habitats. It's not as good. And then, yeah, there's lots of daisies, these beautiful white flowers, there's some orange plants, lots of interesting plants, and there's a very short little sister for it. So we're going to hop back in the car and find some more. This is 
like a sort of the comic kind of Hello again. We now find ourselves out a few kilometers outside the beautiful town of Darling along the west coast of South Africa with another really nice Drosera sister flora. So the form here at Waylands Nature Reserve that we're currently sitting in is quite a nice one. They have massive flowers. They're kind of slightly off-white. There's some pinker ones over there. You get quite a good mixture of them. They're a nice size. But the flowers in particular are extraordinarily large. As big as seven and a half centimeters or three inches across is the biggest I've recorded here. So where we're sitting is quite a bit wet on the other side. So we've seen behind me, oh, after getting bitten by a horsefly, is a very nice deep ditch full of this beautiful Geyseraisa radiance. This is a rare and really, really beautiful bulb. You can come a little closer and have a look. He's grown really wet inundated areas and have this incredible red center with purple petals and black dots on the inside to attract beetles. And as you can see around here, there are hundreds of them and millions of beautiful wildflowers. So this is truly another one of my favorite sites. We'll go around and find some Drosera palsiflora to show you. See you there. So here, just a few steps away, is some Drosera palsiflora, another really beautiful winter growing sundew. These lovely, large lilac flowers, very delicate, very nice to open the sun. So unlike Drosera cystiflora, the stem is completely devoid of leaves. They just have this large basal rosette with very long snap tentacles at the end. They make these nice, thick, tall flower stems. They're also glandular and catch bugs. There's a lot of little bugs caught along its length. And they grow a little bit drier, kind of against these slopes. We'll see there's a few more over there and a few more beside me. Often they grow in even bigger clumps than these. This is quite a clonal form. They don't make much seed. I'm not entirely sure why. There's a few sundews like that in the Cape, but still magnific magnificent to see on this beautiful spring day. So on our last stop here for Waylands Reserve in Darling, we have a really magnificent patch of the Drosera sister flora here. This is a lighter colored one, but they form super big clumps. These lovely bright pink flowers, there's some whiter ones here, there's more white ones kind of out there. Just to illustrate to you the immense size of them, there's a really big specimen over here on the right. Look at this, this petal spread out. This thing must be six or seven centimeters across. That's by far the biggest sundew flower in the world. These lovely tall rigid stems, you can see here they're really thick. There's one flower that still needs to come up. Beautiful tiny pink bud. These plants grow quite often from small clumps from the roots. This is quite unique for the form in the area. To do so, I took a herbarium specimen last year and had five or six stems on it, which is really unusual for sister flora. So that's it for now, unless we happen to find some big parcel flora on the way out. Let's check the size of this flower here. Yeah. 